Bye. See ya. <laughs> All right, so for the price of return tickets to the States, I bought the cheapest estate car that I found on Facebook Marketplace. And I can actually sleep in the back of it. <laughs> I'm gonna traipse around the UK looking for boats. Once I've found my boat, I will sell this car. Got it for really cheap, so I should be able to sell it for pretty much the same amount of money after like a month or two. So, got my new chariot. My mini actually broke down, the alternator seized, it overheated. Me and my dad have fixed it, but I just don't have the faith in it to do these long trips. So today I'm gonna go to Swansea to see a Freedom 35 cat catch. Such a beautiful boat. Just before I bought Binky actually, we were looking at these Freedom 35s, but they were a little bit out of our budget. This one has come through, through a subscriber who's emailed me and told me I can go and look at the boat he said he'll potentially do a special deal for me and it is at the top end of the budget in fact it's all of my budget but this isn't like the catamaran in Costa Rica this one doesn't need any work really any big work and if you haven't seen the video where I tell you exactly what I'm doing about the catamaran in Costa Rica then check that out I uploaded that on Wednesday so uh, that's going live tonight actually so it's going to be interesting to hear your response let's get cracking to Swansea five hour drive I'm going to go stay on the boat I'm going to go and get a good feel for it uh, yeah check out a complete and a completely lovely boat onwards and upwards can we all just appreciate Oh yeah, oh yeah. You like that, do you? You like hmm. that, you like that. Yeah. Check out my uh, control panel. It's like an aircraft. I love that retro red and green. Retro, retro. 2005 is retro now, Yoshi. All right, we're here. But before we go and see the boat, let me tell you about this video sponsor, which is Blinkist. Thank you so much to Blinkist for sponsoring this video and helping me to recoup some of the losses from that Costa Rica trip. Essentially what Blinkist is, it's an app which gives you the key themes from over five and a half thousand non-fiction books and it breaks it down into what they call blinks. You can read it and also every book has audio as well. So for me in particular, my favorite book, the only book that I've ever read twice and that's Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. I'm now using Blinkist to refresh my memory on that book because there's just so much information and to get that information again refreshed in my head is so nice. I would massively recommend Sapiens. It's a book about the early origins of the human species, how we came to rule the world. It also goes in as well to the early sailors, the people who conquered the sea and spread from country to country. It's really interesting so check it out. But the best thing for me is the audio. Really Really, really good quality, really clear, little bits of music, very well narrated. Human beings first stepped onto the world stage about two and a half million years ago. Back then, we weren't so special. And also with the premium plan, you get Blinkist Connect, which is essentially two accounts for the price of one. You can share it with a friend or a family and they get a premium subscription as well. Check the link in the description and use this URL and get 25% off a premium plan. You can click the link in the description and start your seven day free trial. Now let's go see that boat. You ready? Ready, Ian. <laughs> I'm Archer. Alright, so come to see Ian's Freedom 35. Just had a lovely steak and chips at his place. And we're at Swansea Marina. <laughs> Swansea Yacht and Subaqua Club. <laughs> There's a difference. It's not a marina, it's different. <laughs> Ooh, nice catamaran. A long way from Costa Rica now. <laughs> It's a bit wet and cold and costly. <laughs> That's Steve's boat. Yeah, it looks a bit like my mum and dad's. Is the sea line as well. Mrs. Keff's boat. The Barrow Road. Westerly Renown, I think. Another Westerly. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna... Ah, there's a worm here. <laughs> a worm packy. Whoa. Wow, look at that. There she is. So we're on the river, are we? Yeah, and she's flowing fast tonight. Yeah. Look at John Morgan's boat. Nice. Fairline 36. 
then we've got Mako, John, just to be calm the door. Is that dad, a, was, dad was calling the doors well many years ago. Is that like an old uh, rescue? Oh, I don't know. That's a strange boat, isn't it? They, they do a lot of diving. Ah, uh, okay. And I used to be the only one in the village until this one turned up. Ah, oh, so this one's not yours. No. Uh, okay. So this is a Freedom 35. Not Ian's Freedom 35. <laughs> it has the wraparound sails from the Okay. I'm talking to the owner about he's looking to put maybe some tracks, same as mine. Right. Swings at the fishing boat, he used to be treasury here. I'm Commodore. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of positions in there. Yeah. I, see, I see you've got to know a lot of the people in the marina. In the last 18 months, yeah, they've been amazing. And that was the difference between being over the other side and here we got a clubhouse yeah. and you get the mix and the lots of them me being a novice sailor yeah well having absolutely no idea whatsoever yeah. having people around to, to help you keep your boat afloat and keep it running and maintaining it and yeah, yeah. i definitely needed help so yeah uh, everyone at this club's been amazing yeah amazing. i would say like a big difference between like the uk marinas and the marinas around the mediterranean there's ah. such a much better community in the in the uk that's eddie's boat <laughs> always for sale two hundred and fifty thousand pounds you're joking me yeah, i am but he, he would <laughs> gladly take it yeah i'm sure <laughs> that's peter he's um vice commodore at the club that's peter's uh, that's kev's boat that's the oceanus 393. Yeah, it was an uh, offshore installation manager, an OIM, an oil rigs, and then worked out in Qatar. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is the boat he bought when he uh, came back from Qatar. This is the boat that, um, you know, the video you've seen of mine. Mm. This is the boat that was going alongside. Ah, uh, okay. Craig's boat. <laughs> On that till three, four in a motor, I don't remember. <laughs> Proper party boat, that one. <laughs> Every time, uh, bless it. <laughs> got to mark his territory so he knows where he is. All right. And welcome to the Freedom Express. <laughs> oh, nice canopy. Uh, honestly, worth its weight in gold. Yeah, they're not cheap, are they? It's absolutely worth it, though. It gave us an extra room on the boat. So you don't use it while you're out sailing, although we could rig it up to actually use when sailing, but we never have bothered. We normally take it down when you go out. But when it's here, it's worth it, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, in the UK. We normally have the tender or the, the dinghy. Mm. It's an aluminium bottom dinghy on it. Okay. That's normally hanging off the back here. But in winter, I store it properly, put it on top. And yeah. Right, be careful because these decks are slippery, alright? Okay. I had new up and down switches put on recently because I had to pull the chain up by hand when we were out at the, the Mumbles Bay. It dropped perfectly, no bother. Next day, press a button, nothing. It's nothing, just a nothing. So I ended up, oh, I went right then. Electrician boys, in you come. <laughs> ben and Craig sorted me out. It did uh, new switches, that's all it was. And yeah. straight away, he, he just touched the switch in a different way to that, and it worked straight away. <laughs> Typical. Yeah. But I worked the sweat up, so I didn't mind paying a couple of quid to get that. So. Yeah. Oh, and nice. see the, the wishbone booms? Yeah. That's what's on the other one, but he's got his covers up. Right, okay. As I said, the, the sails aren't reefed, but the lines can run yeah. through. And I'll show you inside the cockpit now. We put a new uh, cable through the mast um, for the wind speed windometer or whatever yeah, you call yeah. it. Um, there's a new one on, uh, on there as well. Okay. Even the, the old one still worked. We had a new one on the boat. Yeah. So I went, well, we may as well throw that up while we're up there. So you pulled a new cable through, put that on, and uh, yeah, it's been working perfectly since. We'll have a look at the cockpit tomorrow, probably. Such a unique design, isn't it, with this coming down here? Like that. So this boat is used. It's a double bed. Okay. 
This is my bed. This is where I always sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Kids go in the back, showers in the front, and I get the double, yeah. So is this like just the mast like continued down? Uh -huh. So that's like the carbon fibre? Yeah. So obviously keel step to mast. Yeah. You can't see it in the front. Well, there's all bedding and stuff in there, but it's behind. You can take tomorrow, you know, pull the thing apart tomorrow. Yeah, or yeah. Whatever you want. Oh, nice one. But, uh, yeah. It's basic, but um, if you run the engine for 20 minutes, half hour, you'll get your hot water. Right, okay. You get a shower. Well, I've done in the past anyway. There's no shower in there. Mm. You can get a shower under the canopy at the back. Oh, okay. Just a little handheld jobby. Right. With warm water, I tell you, it makes a difference. I was showering cold for a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not good. But what? run the engine, as I said, 20 minutes, half hour. You've got boiling up water, mm. do your dishes or have a wash or whatever. Don't open the fridge. <laughs> I switched it off a couple of days ago. Yeah. And I opened it this morning. I should, have, I should have just left it on, I don't know why I didn't. Um, that's where the engine is. Yeah. I've got a, there's a fridge here, okay, which yeah. doesn't really work very well. I used to use that one because it was up of our camper. Mm. It'll be going back in our camper. And then you've got two singles. Okay. One each side, you can see them there. They're quite comfortable. This has kind of been a storage area for us to be honest. Yeah, a lot of like these sorts of berths are used for storage in the engine. We'll just lift that up, yeah. There she is. Little Volvo triple. Mm. Right, that beep says I can switch gas on now. So the valve upstairs, so you hear it click. Right. You hear that? Yeah, yeah. So that's the gas is on. So what Volvo is that? Is it like a 2002 or something? Or I think so. That, yeah. Very, they're, they're very often used, aren't they? What's that? Oh, uh, yeah. belt. Fan belt. Filters. Buggy stuff for the diesel. Okay, yeah. Diesel um, I cleaned out the, the tank. Okay. Um, well that wasn't the reason. There was, uh, it was leaking the gasket on top. We overfilled it. We put about 20 litres of diesel into the bilge. Right. It was desired and pump it into tanker things, I don't know, storage things. Yeah. And I gave it to a mate who's got a big caterpillar digger. <laughs> you you won't have it. Yeah. Because there's yeah. loads of water in there, all sorts of crap, you know? Yeah. So anyway, we decided we'd fix this, uh, this leak with new gasket. New mm. gasket on the top. And there was a bolt missing as well. He got a new bolt, uh, Lee, our local marine guy. Um, he said, empty it all out. And when we emptied it, the, you know the filter, the, the intake filter for drawing the diesel out? Yeah. I've seen it like it. It was just yeah. gunged up with all sorts of crap. Uh, it was just, uh. He was surprised the thing would ever run. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, of yeah. it, you know? Yeah. So we have completely emptied it, completely cleaned it, um, washed it out, pumped it out. And refilled it. Mm, so mm. I think it's about three quarters full, or something, 70, right. 80 litres in there. Cool. And the, the tanks are just like, it's under there, yeah. And you can access them. Easy. That's, <laughs> that's a luxury in a boat. <coughs> and then water, you've got water that side. Okay. So diesel that side, water that side. So mm -hmm. diesel water. Yeah. What do you think, Rashi? Oh, nice, nice. But pretty much everything works. So yeah, they, all, they changed some of the uh, uh, lights. I haven't changed them. Yeah, I put um, Victron um, chargers, a right. couple of new batteries. Yeah, um, because you'll see that the spare I've got a spare starter battery upstairs mm. next to the um, heater. So if we did use the heater, just take the battery out, don't yeah. leave it in that box or whatever you right, do. Right. But um, it's a spare starter battery because mm. it was open cell. Okay. So the electrician said I shouldn't have an open cell inside the boat. Okay. It should be closed cells at all right. times. Yeah, I guess the um, so if it boiled fumes, off. Yeah, yeah. We got these little monitors everywhere. Uh, yeah. Stuff. There's one in each section of the boat. So there's one in the back there, one in the front, one in the middle. Okay. As I said a couple of new batteries, Victron chargers, two of them. Because I didn't realise you could actually have 
a couple of outputs for, on a Victron. I bought the single output on the first one I bought, right. and then Sparky went, what are, you, what are you doing? You need a couple of outputs. So okay. I ended up buying another one that was a couple of outputs. Uh, so anyway, I ended up with two battery chargers on it. Right, right. And they're smart, so you can download the app and you can monitor yeah, yeah. through Bluetooth what they're doing. I've never bought it because it just says on the panel there, 13.3. And then when we switch the engine on, it'll go up to 14 or something. So the alternator works. Yeah. So this, so this is, is it's a gas alarm and it controls the um, the valve on the gas. The valve well. on the gas as well. And also you've got the Chinese diesel heater. You replace the old high quality, Webasto. high quality yeah. Chinese. <laughs> well, you can buy ten of those to one of the yeah. dispatchers. There's there's actually a really good. Like community, there's also like a Facebook page. I don't know if you know the Facebook page. I've been there's online like many a time looking up the fault codes. As I said, there's a fuel fault code with it. The right. boys in the know reckon it's uh, yeah diesel coming back down. Yeah, you can you can easily you you play with it to your heart's delight. I have no interest. <laughs> I got my little electric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well if you're in a marina, brilliant. You would need to get that up and running at some stage, I'm sure. Yeah, on the hook in the UK or Mediterranean winter. But in the marina, you've got your 240 there, 240 there, um, all, both with USBs, so it comes in useful. All right, so here we are. Just went for a few pints with Ian. Great guy, great guy. Also, very honest and open about his boat. Um, gonna stay here tonight. Tomorrow we're gonna check out, you know, a little bit more on the deck. We're gonna get the engine started. We're gonna have a little look around. We're in the daylight. And uh, yeah, just uh, being here at the yacht club and it's a nice, uh, nice vibe. Got the um, the little middle bit on the, uh, the sofa down. So pretty comfortable here. It's a nice double. Yeah, it's going to be interesting exploring this boat and Swansea a little bit more. And like I said, we've chatted, I've chatted to Ian and he said, it doesn't matter, it's, you know, it's nice to chat to you, it's nice to hang out, nice to spend some time down here, have a few pints and stuff anyway, regardless of whether I buy the boat or not. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be nice, checking out the boat a little bit more. Yoshi seems all right. It's a bit difficult for him to get down those steps, that spiral staircase over there. But from what I can see, this boat is complete. The things that I will or would add to this boat are a water maker, a wind vane, self-steering, and some more solar panels. And that's it. Get busy in the comments, guys. If you have any experience with Freedom 35s, let us know. I really love the lines on this boat. She's beautiful. Classic, but like not old-fashioned if that makes sense so in terms of the sea keeping abilities i like the long keel uh, but it's quite a shallow draft actually so in terms of offshore i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm sure some of you guys can enlighten me as to the performance offshore in a boat like this but in terms of space i would say it's really good for a couple or a small family this is the thing i'm completely undecided do i want to be you know, just me, maybe another person, or do I want to be, you know, a group, four or five people traveling around the world? It's a difficult choice, and I have, you know, a couple of months while it's the winter. You don't want to, you don't want to be out here, out there in the Bristol Channel in this weather. It's very nasty. A, a video that inspired me massively before starting this whole sailing thing was Sailing Bubbles. I think it's Sailing Bubbles or Chasing Bubbles. You know, this guy who he went around the world on his boat with great people and if he was a youtuber these days he would be so popular because he did so much and unfortunately he passed away in india that was such a shame but such an inspiring story so check that out i think it's chasing bubbles didn't capture it on video but <laughs> the english winter on a boat is brutal we're healing over in the marina <laughs> so we're in swansea here do you like my little bent finger? So I bent that finger and I did this while rebuilding the engine, grinding some bolts. That's why that one's all wonky. That's what sailing will do to you, or living the dream. That's what it'll do to you. It'll break you, but it's worth it.
Good morning, people. <laughs> <laughs> Got me up at flipping half seven this morning. Not seen half seven for a while. <laughs> There's your gas valve. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. That switches off on the and on with that gas pilot system. Mm. Spare gas bottle. Then right. hot and cold handheld shower. Right. Bit of the old prop. Oh yeah. <laughs> Before we changed it. Yeah, so you change the cutler sparing stuffing box, prop shaft, propeller. Correct. Right. Yeah. And engine mounts. And that's the D1 I was talking about. Uh, that's oil. The varnish that's all the oil yeah, that we use. I tried looking to get a new one of these, so you can see the screen's kind of gone a little bit. Uh, you can still see 16 on it, but you've got uh, um, 12 volt USBs here. The iPad or whatever yeah. clipped on here, Navionics, Savvy, and all that. Nice, all these instruments are working. They are, yep. Yeah. As I said, we put um, for the windometer, I want to be better. But we put a new cable through. So we had old boy Roy from Cardiff. Mm. I'm trying to remember the name of his company. Yeah, he went up anyway. I love this winch as well. Big electric winch. So you, got, you, so you go like that. And then slow speed there. Yeah. Nice. We'll start her up. The engine was in out, in out, getting everything all lined up. I didn't realise how much of a hassle it was. Yeah. How did you it. How did you get the engine out? Like, not the no, he just he just took it out of there, put it in the middle of the cabin, just in the middle of there. Ah, okay. Yeah. So all the work was done inside. Yeah. Now for the test, the walking test. Very solid. So I do believe that this boat is actually balsa cord. I'm not sure if it's balsa cord throughout. She's got a long keel with uh, encapsulated ballast, which is really nice. I really want your opinion on this boat's offshore sailing capabilities. Uh, I know that downwind with these two masts, this thing is going to be absolutely nuts. Downwind and on a reach, the masts are completely straight. You've got your main. The main is the front one, I guess. Completely straight, and they have a uh, track. The original had the wraparound sails, which is a little bit inconvenient. However, the aerofoil shape, when you do those wraparound sails where they wrap around the mass like that. You've actually got a pretty decent sized solar panel there, a little kind of trickle one there, and you've got these wishbone sail guides essentially made of aluminium. Sail covers are new, new sail covers, new spray hood and canopy, also the tender, it's an aluminium bottom tender. That has a 5 horsepower 2 stroke with it, Yamaha, apparently runs well, it looks clean. But I really like the lines on this boat, she's beautiful, she's absolutely beautiful. The rudder has wheel steering, but also at the top there you can attach a emergency tiller. So it's a very safe boat, if it was to be sailed through Orca territory then not 100% sure. However, emergency tiller, not bad. You could probably jewelry rig something as well if the worst was to happen. Uh, you've also got a brand new life raft as well. 
How about that? One thing that I've noticed as well about this boat, because it's been lashing it down with rain, there's not been any leaks at all that I can find anyway. And it's uh, pretty dry. In the middle of the cabin, you've got six foot standing headroom. Headlining's been done. When you move over kind of towards the galley, uh, at this point, you do start to uh, hit your head on the ceiling. But along the center of the boat, you have complete headroom. So yeah, it's very, very rare to have a boat that doesn't leak at all. So there you go. Well done, Ian. I don't know how you've done it, but it's flipping dry. It's a dry boat. So we didn't really see the V berth properly. Um, just a lot of bedding in here at the moment, but also very clean, dry, and uh, good headroom in here as well. Yeah. Really nice headroom. Once you put the little middle bit in there, it'll be a nice double. Or it's never really a double in a V berth, is it? But I've been doing a little bit of research online as well, and I found that Captain Q. The Yacht Hunter has actually done an episode on a Freedom 35 and uh, the title of that video is actually a blue water, you know, it's a blue water boat. Um, they These boats have crossed the Atlantic, no problem. So, yeah, there's that, but of course, again, like, I'd really appreciate your guys' advice. Massive thanks to Ian, like, having me on the boat. He's such a character. Great guy to spend some time with, have a few pints with, absolute legend. This boat is solid and it's complete, like very dry, no leaks. I know I've said it in the video, but really, really good, complete, it looks beautiful. So it's, it's a contender and it's a really good option. He's advertised it for sale on Facebook Marketplace for 28,000 uh, pounds. That price I think could come down a little bit. He said, you know, that uh, the price can come down for me because uh, he'd like to see the boat sailing around the world so that could could be a possibility and if you're interested in buying this boat as well don't feel bad by snapping up one of my options um, i'll leave ian's email in the description box if you need uh, any extra information or you're interested in the boat like i've said even though i almost bought that boat in costa rica i am trying to take my time with the weather here in the uk taking on a project or a boat now is going to be a little bit um it's just not going to be comfortable so one two months have a little look around have a shop around and and see what the best boat's going to be so stay tuned definitely going to have a boat by spring it's going to be a wild adventure so get yourselves prepared i'm getting prepared every day <laughs> mentally physically another massive thank you as well to blinkist for sponsoring this video really really appreciate it i'm genuinely using it at night before i go to bed when i'm driving it is really good for learning new things learning new skills so check out the link in the description to get that special deal thanks a lot to, as well to everyone who went to the coffee the patron and the paypal link as well for chucking me a few quid that helps massively so thank you so so much i'm going to try and upload some bonus content on there as well to make it worth your while so stay tuned for any updates on that yeah thank you so much for all your positivity and leaving some lovely comments i can't get around to replying to every comment but i do read most of the comments so thank you very much okay onwards and upwards not sure what that clap is sorry Ashi.